From the Northern Command Center, beautiful Spokane, Washington, it's time for the Classic Guitar Rock Daily Update. I'm Jeremy. Thank you for being here. And <laughs> second day in a row, it's a streak. Here we are. Thank you for tuning in. If you haven't been listening to Classic Guitar Rock Radio, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Go to ClassicGuitarRock.com, click on that CGR radio button, and you're in sonic euphoria. Great classic guitar rock from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. I won't lie. It's mostly 70s and 80s, but we play some 60s, at least one 60s tune an hour. It's mostly 70s and 80s, but it's, it's, the, it's the classic rock you'd expect to hear, but then some extra special stuff as well. And right out of the gate, my friend Will is chiming in. Hi, Will. Of course, you all know the story. Will's not allowed to talk. On the, you know, one of my very best friends in the world, but he's not allowed to talk. He has incriminating evidence. We can't do that. Can't have that here. The reputation of the show is too important to risk. So, Will, thank you for joining as a silent observer. We appreciate it. <laughs> Will, by the way, let me tell you a story about Will. Will, I don't know how this happened, Will. Will is like, are you in charge? Are you in charge of our 40 year high school reunion? You and like two other people are like in charge. And I don't know how you got saddled with that responsibility, but I know Will can handle it. I'm already making plans to stay at his house next. He doesn't know this. I'm already making plans to stay at his house next summer uh, for said 40 year reunion. 40 year reunion, class of 85, Lawton High Wolverines. Woo! Will says, not really. I don't know what that's, does that mean you're not in charge or that you don't have the wherewithal? I don't know. I'm, yes, I am. You've already said too much, Will. Okay, you've already violated the prime directive, but thank you for, for being here. So yeah, I'll be, I'll come rolling in. I probably won't even give you notice. I'll just show up next summer sometime. Will, I'm moving in for a week for the reunion. Tell, tell Rachel, I'll, I'll be there. Okay, I'll be expecting dinner every night. All right, so thank you, Will. Thank, thanks to all of you for being here. You can always chime in like Will's doing uh, via Facebook, uh, Twitter, X, the YouTubes, all the different ways. I'd love to hear from you today. So let's jump in here. Excellent musicians playing terrible music. This is going to get people mad at me. Who am I talking about? King Crimson. King Crimson. There's a whole bevy of King Crimson fans. I don't know why. Uh, Adrian Ballou's supergroup King Crimson tribute band Beat will live stream their November 10th concert in Los Angeles. Many of their remaining shows have limited seats available with multiple sellouts. So Adrian Ballou... I love Adrian Ballou. Here's the thing. I like the members of King Crimson. I just can't. I try to like them, but I can't keep up the facade. I just don't. Okay. Excellent musicians playing bad music. Sorry if that offends you. Oh, damn. Remember that song from about 1989, Adrian Ballou? I bought that CD. I bought the whole CD. It's the only good song on it. Adrian Ballou's supergroup tribute band Beat. So they'll be playing the King Crimson songs from the 80s. They had the album Discipline. I think that came in 1980. It's one of the more palatable. King I'm just, I want to like them, but I can't. Guys, I'm sorry if I'm letting you down. Anyways, they're doing this show. Uh, Robert Fripp, uh, Robert Fripp, Steve Hackett, these, they're the guitar players that have sat down their whole career. Not a fan. If you're old and crippled, I get it. But Robert Fripp has always sat down and wore a big set of headphones like I'm doing, only bigger, with a big reel-to-reel -reel player between him and the audience. Yeah, that's a riveting concert performance there, Robert Fripp. Robert Fripp, Steve Hackett. Um, I'm sorry. This has gone off the rails. 
the story is that there's the King Crimson tribute show featuring Adrian Ballou and Steve Vai and who else? Uh, Danny Carey of Tool uh, and Robert Fripp is involved. So he and his reel to reel player will be there. You'll be able to see the back of his reel to reel player while he sits down with his headphones and plays a show for you. Uh, they got uh, a, this uh, live stream thing on November 10th. So you might want to check it out. Fripp, Baloo, Tony Levin, pff, monster bass player. That's the thing. Excellent musicians playing bad music. Uh, Fripp, Baloo, Levin, and drummer Bill Bruford, another just killer drummer, released a trio of King Crimson albums in the 80s, including 1981's, it's from 81, not 80, Discipline, 1982's Beat, and 1983's Three of a Perfect Pair. So they'll be playing a lot of stuff from that era. The Los Angeles live stream will be mixed by Bob Clear Mountain, who has served in the same role for countless classic rock sessions, as well as live stream tributes for the late Foo Fighters drummer Taylor Hawkins. So check that out if you're a King Crimson fan. Um, Tucker says, I find it comfy sitting down when playing guitar. I struggle standing up. You know what, Tucker, it's way easier to play sitting down. No, I, I get you. But, but unless you can't stand up for the viewing audience please stand up just please stand up and don't put a reel to reel player between you and the audience that's all i'm saying i'm not trying to be mean tucker by the way says love motley crew but vince can't sing and nikki can't play apparently <laughs> oh, no argument there thank you tucker um what else do we got It's the, I didn't intend for this to be the theme. Okay. Alice Cooper love to, I love, love, love Alice Cooper, the person, but just can't get into his music. I'm not, I'm not trying to be negative on purpose today. I, it's just fallen out that way. I love Alice Cooper. One of my favorite individuals. Seriously. I love him. Well, why are we talking about him? Because He's announced tour dates. Here's the story, too, by the way. So many good people have, have toured with Alice Cooper, and they all have nothing but nice things to say about Alice. He's a wonderful individual. I just wish I liked his music more. I, I want to. I play lots of Alice Cooper on CGR radio, by the way. I just, I just need to stop. Okay, the new dates follow his recent tour with fellow shock rocker Rob Zombie that got underway in late August. So uh, the latest leg started in August. The 2025 dates so far include nine concerts that will keep Cooper on the road through February, plus, the plus a festival date in early May, and I'm sure there'll be more. Everyone loves playing with Alice Cooper. He's a great dude. Cooper's summer tour featured some of his best-known songs including No More Mr. Nice Guy, I'm 18, Billion Dollar Babies, Elected, and School's Out. His latest album, 2023's The Road, however, was not represented in the opening night set of the tour he shared with Zombie. So let's talk about that for a minute. So many, okay, so for instance, uh, the 6th of October, I went and saw Judas Priest. Great show. And I would be interested... Uh, in your thoughts on this, when you go see a legacy band, be honest, when you go see a legacy band, how much of their new material do you want to hear? How much do you want to hear? Priest played two songs from their new album, which I thought was about right. And they were good songs. They played Panic Attack. They played Crown of Horns. They might have done Invincible Shield. No, I think they only did two anyways. And they were good. They were good. So what are your thoughts? Do you want to hear new material from these? Now, now think about this. Back in our day, back in the 80s, for instance, if you went and saw Judas Priest, well, they're getting played all over MTV and the radio, at least rock radio. So you expect them to play a bunch of Screaming for Vengeance, right? If you're seeing them on that tour or on the Defenders tour, you're expecting three, four, five songs from the new album because it's hot. Well, now the nature of the music biz is these legacy bands released in a new album and it doesn't get any airplay. So unless you really go seek it out, 
you won't be familiar with it. It is what it is. So what's the right mix? Do you want to hear a bunch of new stuff or would you rather just them stick to the classics? The who, who, the who. Yeah. They're not done yet. We thought they were done. They've done a farewell tour about 20 times now. They're not done. They're coming back. Uh, after a year mostly spent apart, this is according to uh, Ultimate Classic Rock, Pete Townsend confirms that he and Roger Daltrey will be working together again in 2025. Pete says, quote, I met with Roger for lunch a couple weeks ago. He's, this is he's talking to the standard. He says, quote, we're in good form. We love each other. We're both getting a bit creaky, <laughs> but we will definitely do something next year. Okay. Uh, most recent tour together was back in 2023 when they had a string section at their shows. Um, Townsend indicates that any future dates would more closely resemble Daltrey's more stripped down 2024 U.S. tour. Remember, Roger did a little solo thing. Quote, the last big tours that we've done have been with a full orchestra, which was glorious but we're now eager to make a noise and make a mess and make mistakes and probably make more money if they don't have a string, uh, an orchestra in tow. Uh, the who played a couple of standalone shows in March in support of teenage cancer trust at London's Royal Albert hall. More recently, Daltrey inducted Peter Frampton into the rock and roll hall of fame and Townsend in November will be at the uh, Theatre Royal in London for a performance of The Seeker, which is an upcoming con concept album completed with his wife, Rachel Fuller. The most recent album under the Who banner remains 2019's Who. So if you're a Who fan, again, guys, you got to get out and see these guys while you can. Because I know it's the who, and I know they do want them every couple of years of farewell tour, but eventually it will actually be the last one. So you should probably get out the who listen to who's next, by the way. Okay. Another, uh, shameless plug for classic guitar rock radio. If you listen to the well, which is our show that's on every Saturday and Sunday, the last hour of the well is called the whole hog where Dennis Hoagland plays a complete album. So a few weeks ago, he plays Who's Next. What an album. You sit through and listen to an album like Who's Next, and it's like 60% of the album are classic rock staples. You're like, I didn't know this was on this album. I forgot this was on this album. I didn't know. It. Seriously. Unbelievable. And that like came out in 71, I think. Just a tremendous album. The Who has a great catalog. I love them. Okay. Uh, Townsend points the finger at Daltrey for this delay, though the dam may be close to breaking. Quote, the album side of it, Roger's not keen, but I would love to do another album. And I may try to bully him on that. Now, remember, Roger has been very outspoken about not wanting to make an album because he says you can't make money on an album. You can't make money. You know, and I don't want to get into the whole streaming model. Artists don't make money. I just saw a post and I even made a snarky comment to this post. Where did I see it? I saw it on X. Someone had made the point that for a band to make the same amount of money they make from selling one physical album, they have to like get 5,000 streams. So think about that. Something like that might even have been higher. Right. Artists don't make any money from streaming. And yet you have to stream because the snarky remark was, well, oh, I'm making fun of myself. Artists don't have to stream. No, they don't. They don't have to stream. But 99% of folks, that's the way they consume music now. So if you don't stream, you aren't going to make any money. Right. So it's kind of a rough it's a, it, what is, what do you call that in between a rock and a hard place? That's exactly what it is for these artists. They kind of have to stream. I get, you know, on principle, they could say, well, we're not going to stream. And a lot of bands held out for a long time, but no one's really holding out anymore. Cause they realize 
I can hold out on principle, but then I don't make anything. So what's my point? My point is if you really want to support an artist, um, buy their albums. Okay. Buy, buy it. Actually buy it. Either as a download. Well, I don't know what they make on a download. Order it on vinyl, order a CD. Cause they, they actually make a lot more money. Just throw that out there. Even though I made a comment snarkily on the other side <coughs> earlier today, I can change my mind. Tucker says, Maiden with the Future Past Tour only played two songs from Sinjitsu. Most were old songs and received far better from the fans. Same with ACDC. I think fans want to hear the big hits being played, but with a balance of new material. Metallica played two nights at Donington, one night old material, two night new material. Let's demand two nights for the price of one ticket. I'm all for that. So Rich Hanna, host of Classic Metal Vault on CGR Radio, he uh, recently attended the Maiden or the Metallica deal in Seattle, the two nights, same thing. Um, concerts are just getting so expensive. That's a whole nother topic. Uh, thank you, Tucker. Now we're gonna we're gonna I'm, I'm talking about this. I've, I've floated this like a trial balloon and so far the feedback has been good. What I want to start doing and I've reached out to some record companies, but I haven't heard back. haven't heard back. Basically, I want some record companies like Frontiers, right or some of these other labels uh, that that produce, either new albums from legacy bands or new bands that have a classic rock sound. I've reached out and said, Hey, send me some music and I will play it on my radio station. We'll do a show dedicated. I'm also thinking of like actually once an hour, maybe we'll have a little sweeper that says here's new music that doesn't suck. And then we'll play a new song, right? Something like that. Uh, I'd love to be doing that because there are bands putting out good music that old farts like us would enjoy. So, uh, but I don't want to buy them <laughs> because I can't afford to buy everything new that comes out. If, but if record companies would send it to me, I'd totally play it on the station. So anyways, speaking of new bands playing good music, I had the opportunity to see Sabaton open for Priest. These guys are awesome. Have you seen Sabaton? Sabaton, if you like Iron Maiden, right? If you like uh, some Judas Priest, they got more keyboards, right? A little more keyboardy, but they're they're history nerds. That's what I one of the things I appreciated about Iron Maiden, Steve Harris, total history nerd. So you'd hear an Iron Maiden song about a famous battle or a book or, uh, you know, a poem by Coleridge, you know, Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. Who writes a song about an old epic poem? Iron Maiden does. Well, so Sabaton, they're specialized. All of their songs, all of their music is about battles, famous battles throughout history, maybe medieval battles, be the you know, the, the French Revolution, World War II. I mean, they've got all kinds of stuff. Their stage is like a big tank turret. It's awesome. It's awesome. So they are recently have been opening for uh, Priest. I think they've opened for Maiden. They're really good and really enjoyable. They're kind of, they're funny, right? Um, if you get a chance to see Sabaton, I would totally play Sabaton on our station. Right. Um, because they're, they're good. And I think, I think our demo folks with good taste like us would like them. So Sabaton has a new concert film. It's called Sabaton, the tour to end all tours. This is from Blabbermouth. It checks off another item on what is now becoming an increasingly long list of accomplishments for the Swedish meddlers. The film's global premiere included 700 cinemas spanning 26 territories, including a late October release in North America. It is not out of reach to suggest they are the closest thing to this era's Iron Maiden. A band with a set-in-stone sound, 
packed concert venues and brand value that goes beyond merchandise and into video games, TV channels, and even print magazines. Sabaton has also done it without the benefit of a hit single, preferring the tried and true method of a steady album tour release cycle that has tacked on fans in numerous territories. I loved them, guys. They're they're great. Really enjoyed them. I would love to see them on a headlining tour. And I'm a I'm a grumpy old fart. So when I say I like new and I say a new band, I think they've been doing it for 20 years, right? So they're not like snot-nosed kids, but they're 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 they're, they're a, yeah. They put out new albums and they're they're really good. So if you have a chance to see Sabaton, do it. All right. I've already talked too much. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate all your support. Will, Tucker, thanks for your comments. And again, check out Classic Guitar Rock Radio, and we'll do it all. You know what? I'm going to make the commitment. Let's do it again tomorrow. Let's meet tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel. I'll see you then. Live long and prosper. Bye-bye.